Please welcome Peter Yep, partner at Shillings and former deputy director of UK's National Cybersecurity Center. Right, thanks. Wow, what an event. What visions and what ambitions. Um, what heroes. There are no limits to human imagination, wonder, and intelligence. And to slightly misquote Sir Isaac Newton, we stand on the shoulders of those who came before us. Hold that idea, I will return to it later. For everything we've heard about today, there is a fundamental bedrock of information technology. We use it for our financial transactions, to communicate, to help analyze and process data, to write up our reports. We use it in our personal lives and at work. But the pace of technological change has been so fast that perhaps we've not had the chance to take a step back and realize that our reliance on technology is almost total. Without the computers on board the Apollo moon spacecraft, there would have been no landing, as a pilot could never have navigated to the moon. The calculations required to make in-flight adjustments and the complexity of the thrust controls had already outstripped human capabilities. In Houston, NASA also had five of the latest IBM 360 computers to analyze in real time every aspect of the spacecraft's speed, trajectory and health, with a standby computer in case one of them failed at the crucial moment. As Lisa Rich said earlier, risk reduction is an innate part of space companies. Now, the Apollo guidance computer had very few in-flight problems, and most of them were due to human error. It was carried aboard both the command service module and the lunar module, and it flew on 15 manned missions, including nine moon flights, six lunar landings, and three Skylab missions, and the Apollo Soyuz test mission in 1975. It was the first onboard computer where the lives of crew depended on it functioning as expected. Our current computers are much lighter, at least a thousand times faster, and have storage capabilities that are millions of times those achievable back in 1969. But are they more secure? Certainly, we have made advances for astronauts in food, which has improved considerably, and in clothing with lighter, more flexible spacesuits. And apparently, going to the toilet in space has also become much more comfortable. Looking to the future, internet services are going to be beamed to those who take part in space tourism. And where there's internet, there's the possibility to hack something. The main opportunity for space-based cyber attacks currently appears to be disruption of services. But the sky's the limit when it comes to attackers' imaginations. Satellites are just as cyber vulnerable as any other technology. But with the current focus on profitability, launch providers and manufacturers are putting cybersecurity too low on the priority list. There needs to be a security by default approach right from conceptualization and development through to launch and operation. After all, with SolarWinds, we've seen how state actors can negatively impact even the most well-prepared government agencies and corporations. All satellites have a complex structure and the various systems and programs required for operation, navigation, communication channels, onboard sensors, power generators can create a vast attack surface. The world's already seen instances of satellite interference by governments executing cyber attacks and blocking communications, including jamming and spoofing capabilities in the conflicts in Syria and Ukraine by Russia. To ensure that an attack is prevented or mitigated, you need resilience. To ensure the fundamentals are in place, to implement robust and cyber security tested technology, and be able to respond to attacks when it goes wrong. Resilience uses cyber threat intelligence to guide decisions and uh, evaluate acceptable risk. But this is no longer enough. You also need to regularly test your systems for vulnerabilities. You might end up as collateral damage by mistake just because an attacker noticed an easy to take advantage of vulnerability. 
A risk assessment might not have identified you as under threat, but your vulnerabilities might just make you too easy to ignore and take advantage of for an attacker. There were nearly 20,000 new vulnerabilities notified in 2020. Now you can achieve resilience by following current standards, including the National Institute of Standards and Technology, NIST guidelines. It isn't cheap, but it is essential. If we look at the cybersecurity threat to our democracies, there's been a lot of talk of election fraud recently. And one of the main rebuttals to this allegation is that many of the systems employed still rely on manual processes, and long may it remain so. In 2016, the CIA, FBI and NSA assessed that the Russian president ordered an influence campaign aimed at that US presidential election. They assessed Russia's goals were to undermine public faith in the US democratic process, and harm Secretary Clinton's electability and potential presidency. They also assessed Putin and the Russian government developed a clear preference for, at the time, President-elect Trump. However, the Department of Homeland Security assessed that the types of systems Russian actors targeted or compromised were not involved in vote tallying. Moving on to the pharmaceutical and biotechnology industries, they also face significant cybersecurity challenges. These industries, like many of those talked about today, offer an attractive target for cyber attacks because of their substantial investment in research and development, value intellectual property, uh, valuable, and uh, connected IT and operational networks, and the large volumes of sensitive data that they hold. Accelerated by the COVID-19 pandemic, the pace of digitization across every stage of the product life cycle has seen pharma companies scaling the production and supply of products to health organizations, whilst at the same time facing pressure to develop new therapeutics and vaccines for the virus. In efforts to meet demand and bring products to market quickly, the adoption of new technologies and the new ways of working that this brings can mean cyber risk assessments have been given a lower priority, potentially leaving organisations exposed. And couple this with cyber criminals targeting businesses within the life science sector to obtain both the significant personal data that they hold and the intellectual property on new drugs or di diagnostic tools, and you have the perfect storm. COVID-19 has accelerated cybercriminal activity in every sector. In agriculture, the four key areas that present a cybersecurity threat are growing access to services, personal privacy, proprietary information, and intellectual property. Now, the safety culture that already exists in the food industry should make it well-equipped to manage cybersecurity risks, but they do need to be considered from the start of every new project or initiative. Another area to consider in the global food industry is robots. Robotic machines can help to eliminate safety issues for the more dangerous jobs, but this can all be undermined by poor cybersecurity. Food tech is increasingly becoming the training ground for emerging technologies like the Internet of Things and artificial intelligence. However, how much thought is given to cybersecurity over saving manpower and cutting costs? Some of those savings should be ploughed back into cybersecurity. Overall, the food industry is a critical, complex and interconnected global network utilising a diverse range of digital technologies. This again forms a large attack surface and a range of threat scenarios. However, given the wide variety of food types available to cons the consumer, and we've heard about some of those today, diverse food chains and a high number of micro, small and medium-sized businesses, it is currently resilient to disruption. But there are still severe risks within the food distribution and storage arena, however. Food scares can result in panic buying, as we saw in 2020, magnifying this and spreading the effect of any disruption to food supply. 
and the subject of data protection within agriculture is unlikely to disappear as the volume and variety of accumulated data grows, machine learning and artificial intelligence are applied in increasingly sophisticated ways to provide new insights and revenue screen streams for those who have access to it. Improving agricultural technology is one of the means for achieving the fundamental shift that is required by the global, global food network to adapt to population growth, demographic changes, climate change, ecological damage and water scarcity. Not only should we be preparing for the accompanying cyber threat in order to protect the day-to-day -day functioning of the food industry, but also ensure that the adoption of technologies that are urgently needed by mankind are secure but not delayed. Some of the seven fundamental things that you need to do are develop and enforce a formal written policy to ensure strong passwords. Educate your employers regularly on phishing and cybersecurity vigilance. Update IT equipment and deploy security software. Keep patches up to date. Have an effective online backup. Backing up to the cloud saves time and money, but if your backup is in real time and, in, and stored in the same place as the rest of your data, during a ransomware attack, all your data will be encrypted and effectively lost. Use multi-factor authentication, especially for high-risk accounts. And have an effective monitoring system so you know when you've been attacked. And finally, create a cyber incident response plan for when things inevitably go wrong. As Keith Masbach said earlier, time is money. I know that some might say every dollar spent on cybersecurity is a dollar that didn't go into research and development, business development or other mission critical tasks. And the return on investment for cybersecurity may not seem clear enough to encourage action. However, so many that suffer a cyber breach experience a severe business impact. There are financial ramifications and reputational damage for lack of preparation, not to mention safety implications. There is some good news. One example is a project mapping out how to build a resilient cybersecurity system for autonomous vehicles. We've just heard about some autonomous vehicles and the developments there. Um, this also provides an infrastructure to detect and address digital threats. A consortium has invested up to 1.4 million US dollars to tackle cybersecurity issues through the launch of seven projects looking at vulnerable areas cyber criminals may target. Another good piece of news is that on the 4th of December 2020, the Internet of Things Cybersecurity Improvement Act in the US was signed into law. And this bill requires that the National Institute of Standards and Technology, NIST, and the Office of Management and Budget, OMB, uh, should take specified steps to increase cybersecurity for Internet of Things devices. Now, although this bill is targeted at government purchases, network operators, consumer product manufacturers and retailers are likely to follow with similar requirements for consumer products. The bill calls for the creation of standards and guidelines to manage cybersecurity risks. So secure development, identity management, patching, configuration management, and it also directs NIST to work with the US Department of Homeland Security, along with cybersecurity researchers and private sector industry experts, to publish guidelines for reporting and remediating vulnerabilities, of which currently there are many. As I said earlier, 20,000 uh, identified in 2020 alone. Like every other advancement of technology in every industry, Digital innovation brings new opportunity for exploitation. From self-driving vehicle makers to software as a service developers to Internet of Things hardware manufacturers, pushing the envelope with innovation must also mean pushing the envelope with cybersecurity. The two by necessity can no longer be exclusive. When innovation takes priority over users' security, 
people are put at risk. I would argue that we can no longer afford to follow the model of releasing software-based products early and releasing often to correct mistakes. Transitioning your data to digital practices over the past few decades has undoubtedly left vulnerabilities in your processes. Today, as companies increase their reliance on digital data storage, these vulnerabilities are certain to be exploited by hackers. And data storage is only one cause for concern. In addition to new technology, the sheer volume of technology being used daily can open up organizations to cybersecurity threats too. Think about life 20 years ago. While the internet was starting to be integrated into daily operations, there were limited points of entry for a hacker. A computer or a solution connected to a dial-up internet. Today, your laptop, your phone, and maybe even your smartwatch are connected to the internet. Hackers have more opportunities than ever to infiltrate solutions, housing valuable data, or controlling vehicles of any sorts cars, trucks, trains, planes, yachts, tankers, satellites, or even spacecraft. While modern technology plays a role in making operations more efficient and safer than ever, it also presents more op options for hackers who may want to break into your organization's digital solutions. Make sure you firm up the foundations. Build in cybersecurity from the very first conceptual ideas. Integrating security into every step of the software development lifecycle is one of the best ways to reduce costs and risks as the speed of development increases. The internet, computers, and the way they communicate with each other is fundamentally insecure. Unfortunately, this is your starting point, and you need to do everything you can to compensate for the fact that those who came before us never envisaged that their inventions and designs would be used to connect the entire world together. Cybersecurity was not something that they thought about, but it is essential for every one of you here today. Thank you.